Merry Meet. This is going to be another attempt at a video response to the Feather Garden Bells video about their annoyance over eclectic pagans. I had to take down my earlier video because there were some serious sound issues and a lot of people said they couldn't hear what I was saying and I checked it out and yeah, the sound was pretty messed up. So we try again with another so, uh, video recording software and see if that works better. Anyway, I have to say that Feather's video really pissed me off. Now, just to say wh where I'm coming from. I am a chaos, a chaos magician. So, uh, that's pretty much as eclectic as it gets. Pretty much. And uh, one of the main paradigms I use, and paradigms within Chaos magic is basically um, the idea of a contained uh, magical uh, worldview, a system. But what basically the paradigm is a system and a worldview that you work with. And one of the main paradigms I work with is Wiccanish paganism, but pretty eclectic. And as such, I really feel that. Feather's video is talking very really down towards my spirituality. And here's my problem with the video. It really sounds exactly like when you have a Catholic and a Protestant argue about the, all the little things that makes the, the paths different and how it's only their way of doing it that is right. Or when I when listening to a couple of uh, Muslims or arguing about where to put your hands during prayer, because obviously God wasn't listening to you if you had the wrong way to have your hands. And here's really my big beef. You say that how dare people make up shit in their spirituality, and I say how dare you. Try to dictate how other people should practice their religion, their magic. It's not your business. You're annoyed that eclectic pagans go out, discover things that work for them, and then put that up on YouTube or on their blogs and so on and so forth, and share it. Because you want it to only be traditional ways of doing things. And you even ask, how, what does it say about our community that there are people that do this? I say, it shows that we have a great community that develop things that doesn't just go by tradition and say, oh, well, people have discovered something before, we'll just do that. And here's the thing. I don't mind if you want to be traditional. If you want to follow exactly what everybody else has done through the ages. If you can figure out what they did. But anyway, if you want to, try to be as traditional as possible. And that works for you? Great! Beautiful! Do that! But that doesn't work for everyone. There's nothing wrong with being eclectic. There's nothing wrong with discovering new things, discovering things that work for you, and going with that. In fact, I will say that is very, very positive. My teacher, and I had a teacher from I was 16 until I was uh, 24, and one of the most important things he told me was, do learn the basics, and then develop the, your own path. And that is one of the most important lessons you could teach me. And I think you might uh, need to learn that lesson as well. Now, you speak of correspondences. And here's the thing. You speak of, for example, crystal healing. Something I am pretty much pretty into. And if I were to pull out five different books on crystal healing from my show. And I'll decide to look up um, Citrit, just to pull something out of the air here. 
chances are I would get at least three different descriptions about what the magical properties of citrine is from those five books. Because you act like the all agree on correspondences. There is this huge uh, consensus about what correspondences do. It isn't. If you look at different traditions, different authors, different sources, you will find different opinions on these correspondences. It isn't like, oh, Citrine always does this. Rose Quartz always does this. No. Different traditions, different authors, different opinions have different ways that these things interact magically. And I searched, what is the problem if somebody feels that, okay, this stone doesn't work in any of the uh, recognized ways for me, so I want to just make my own way to make it work. You mentioned citrine and curses. And I certainly wouldn't use citrine for curses. It seems a bit strange to me. It's always been a stone of love, of calm, and so on and so forth. No, I mean rose quartz. Uh, messing with this camera has obviously addled my mind. Um, I mean rose quartz. To me, rose quartz is a stone that is for love, for healing, uh, for um, that helps to uh, calm uh, anxieties and so on and so forth. But if it works for somebody else to do cursing to it, that's the problem. Here's the thing. Th there are two things that you, or perhaps three things that you fail to consider in your rant. One, the energies that these things have, that is what the correspondences basically are, how they interact with our magic also interact with the practitioner. And as such, personal experiences of that practitioner and personal associations will affect those energies enormously. That means that, for example, in a lot of magical traditions, sugar is used for love spells, it's used for uh, healings, it's used for very many positive things. But I'm allergic to sugar. I eat sugar, I have problem breathing, I get this pus just gooping up around my eyes and open wounds on my in my skin. So to me, sugar really isn't that positive a thing. So chances are that if I was gonna do a positive little lovey dovey spell, sugar wouldn't be my first choice to use in it. Because its energies might react very differently to me and my associations. The same with the color blue is very healing. It's very calming. It stands for communication, for um, ascension into the higher spheres. However, let's say you have a female witch and she has been raped by a man in a blue jacket. And all she thinks about when she sees the color blue is that jacket. Chances are, it's not going to be that positive. So personal experiences and personal energies, basically who you are, affects how correspondences react with you. So that's, that's one thing you fail to take into consideration. The other thing is that magic is an art. Basically, uh, Alistair Crowley said, magic is the art and science of causing change to occur in accordance with will. And it's not just a science, it's not just a box that you put things in. It's an art. And as such, this art has to be an expression of the artist, aka the witch, magician, practitioner, what you want to call us. And if the artistic expression of that practitioner is that rose quartz can be used for curses, that's what works for them. And the third thing you have failed to dis 
uh, to consider is that even in science, things have abnormal reaction at times. For example, my mom's a nurse, and she told me this story, of course she didn't use names or anything like that because of doctor-patient confidentiality, but there was this little girl in the hospital she was working in, and this girl was going to an examination, and they wanted her to be calm and sleepy, so they gave her a drug for that. Yep, yeah, the result was that she became hyper. I mean, even in science, in direct science, things sometimes work completely different for an individual than it works. For uh, then it works for everybody else. The people that get sleepy from coffee. And the same thing, there are people that have completely different reactions to correspondences than what is traditional. Now, even if you put all of that aside, I believe that we create the world around us. And especially when it comes to magic and the spiritual. So that we very much define what the tools, what the rituals, what the correspondences will do for us. And as such, it's completely possible for somebody to define something that's untraditional. So if somebody wants to define rose quartz, for example, is that what? The example you mentioned to be for curses. That's the problem. I think they can define this. Now, does that do? Uh, I, am I here saying that I think the traditional correspondences are worthless? No, of course not. I think that things that have been used for so long get an energy of them of itself that can really help in magic work. And I also believe that there's a reason why these correspondences are there. People painstakingly eat them out. I definitely use correspondences. However, I also, as you so nicely put it, make shit up when I feel that there's a need for it. For example, I use the tarot, I use runes, and so on and so forth works wonderfully. However, I am also in the process of developing um, a divination system that is based on smileys. Here you know those internet smileys on little tiles. Where's the problem? Magic wasn't... it's not... Don't turn into the Protestant church that say, oh no, the time of... Um, any form of development of our system is long past. All you have to do now is follow tradition, follow tradition, follow tradition. At some point, these things were discovered. People made a tradition. It didn't just magically pop up. So uh, one practitioner discovered this works for me. Then he taught somebody else, and they developed on it. And they taught somebody else, and they developed on it, and that's how a tradition uh, emerged. And that doesn't have to stop, even if you're now in a modern era. Basically, when somebody discovers a new use for a crystal, that is more information added to these correspondences. Now, will that necessarily work for everybody? No. Not all magic works for every practitioner. And sometimes even people put up videos that bullshit or that works just for them. So? Basically, you also mentioned showing respect. I don't see it as, as disrespectful to develop further on traditions. I don't see it as disrespectful taking what works from a tradition and not necessarily following that tradition. I use spells from Hoodoo 
I use rituals from various types of shamanistic practices. I use uh, folk magic traditions. I use Wiccan rituals. I use uh, ceremonial magic. I use what works. What's the problem with it? If you want to follow a strict tradition, there's nothing wrong with that. But why do you have to have everybody do the same as you? If some people are happy developing their own system, making shit up, as you say, what's the problem for you? I think it's great that our society have this creative influence. I think it's amazing. I think we should have more of it. So yeah. I think that your video comes off as extremely judgmental and arrogant. Why can't you just walk your path without annoying and without being annoyed that others walk theirs? And well, that's my video response to you. I hope you have a great day and blessed be.